What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we'll be working on the trailer, but first, I want to just clean up this mess and swap the trailer over to this side and put the Jeep, which is standing outside at the moment, right about there, um, on that spot. But for to do that, and the reason behind that is I'm always struggling to get to my lathe and my milling machine and my cabinets and workstation because of the trailer and all the stuff standing there and the door being an issue there as well so I want to move everything to this side and keep this side the workshop area and that side the storage area which currently the Jeep is but first let's take a sip let's get started <laughs> Okay guys, I'm no woodworker at all, but here's my plan. I marked the line like that and I marked the line going through all the way there. The reason is this trolley is 450 millimeters in depth and this is 600. And I found that if I use the trolley as a base, then I always put stuff behind it which I can never access. So I want to limit that. So then this piece would go against the wall right about there. I'll move my inverter battery up, so that's out of the way. And then I'm going to utilize that rack there that was for my old inverter batteries as a storage rack. So that'd be nice as well. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use this piece or that small piece, we'll see. So this will be clear. And um, I think all these lint bins and stuff that is also a problem as I use it as a storage for all the small stuff and I can never find it again so I just go and buy it anyways. So that's going to come out. The lathe and milling machine will be moved to the other side and these cabinets and that cabinet will move to the back where all the steel cutting and all that stuff happens because I never use them as well. And I don't have space on this side because yeah, I've got my home gym and I plan to maybe use this space for a trolley, for my other trolley. And that space there will be utilized for the lay family machine because it doesn't take up much real estate. So this is the plan. I'm going to try and cut it. I'm so bad at woodworking. Um, you guys have to excuse me. I don't even know. Do you wear safety glasses when you cut wood? I'm just going to anyways because I'm used to that. So yeah. Bear with me on this, let's try and make it happen. Okay, so next up I'll be moving this battery up I guess right above or in line with the inverter or the bottom of that DB I'll see guys okay, so we'll use this trolley now as a, just to put it down and then be able to actually work it out from there <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm kind of done, not completely, the Jeep is on that side, as you guys can see, there's our Jeep, I did not move the cupboards, they're actually in the back, I still have the tent on top, so the Jeep will have to come out eventually, on this side it's still a bit of a mess, I've got the lathe right there, I've got my gym, 
that trolley, that one there needs to go. The welder needs to go to the back and then that will eventually look better. So luckily we are done with this now. That means we can actually move on to the trailer, which will happen tomorrow because it is actually getting late now. And so you want to stay tuned for this because this trailer is going to be epic after this video. It's the next day guys. So what you see here is we've got the trailer and we've got the engine waste. So what we're doing is actually moving the trailer more to the back. And now we'll use the engine waste to just lift it up and I can undercoat the underside. Cheers, let's get going. Okay, so that looks pretty insane right there. So we should be able to get into all the small nooks and crannies. I'm not going to be able to get onto the bottom side. Well, the rear end actually. Um, but I can do that later because I'm going to still weld on that side. But I want to finish off this front area. All this. Up to that second last beam right there. And then that should be it. I think I might... I'll see if I might need to take off the wheels. If not, then we're good. Okay, guys. So, I've got the stuff in here. It doesn't look very... Um, yeah, it's very mucky. I'm actually almost turning it around. So, I'll be using this gun. An undercoat gun. Let's see if it actually works. Because this stuff, the viscosity looks like jelly. I'm not sure if it does actually have to look like that. Anyways, let's find out. Yeah, so it doesn't spray. I'm going to just use some lacquer thinners, see if we can get this viscosity a bit better. stuff just turned into jelly um, stop spraying and diluted again and just turns into jelly I don't know if it's the lacquer thinners or what because the stuff is water-based so I googled it now but you could, there's no they don't say like hey you dilute this with whatever it's so going to try again I've got another bottle I'm gonna try and dilute it with a little bit of water this time because it says water-based so it just it kind of makes sense it does spray on well if it does spray eventually the spray is actually very really nice but it, it does help I'm throwing away a whole liter of this stuff and um, yeah it's gonna take forever then so let's give it a go with the water I don't know if you guys can see this, but it came up pretty well, I must say. Um, it's not bad at all. It's the, the problem was me. I uh, put lacquer thinners in it, I wasted a whole liter. And now I can only do one coat. So this means I'll have to go buy more and then come back and do it again. But I'm going to wait for this to dry and just see what it's like. Um, it's really looking pretty good. Yeah, I ran out of it. You can see white blotches on this. That's still like a thin as it was in there. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but let's see. And then also here's a little gap you can see there. That gap I'm going to fill up with this. It will eventually just fill up that gap and it will be really nice. 
everywhere where the steel and the sheet metal meets I'm gonna layer it thick so yeah so I'm thinking I should probably put this back on its wheels and then go get some more um, I also need some pop rivets for this side I forgot to sorry I forgot to fasten there and um, I want to do this inside and outside and I'm thinking maybe I must just do this whole thing this rubber liner and then all the doors will be made black um, gray rubber liner this means that will be always protected and will be actually very awesome so yeah let me let me go put on the wheels and then do the rest so i moved the trailer back into the garage <laughs> um the shops are closed that selling that rubber liner so it will have to wait anyways i still have something left to do and that's to weld in these angle brackets to basically this will be where the tent fixes onto the trailer itself and on that side i've got a beam in that's actually perfect so i just need to put one in the front and oh, well one in the back and one in the front and then that's good and then i'm also going to just use a brush and just primer the top and um, that will actually just act a, as a anti-rust preservative i'm going to see how far i'm going to go and i need to just everywhere where i've got panels sheet metal coming to the tubes i just want to close those gaps with some silicone or um, I've actually got a product here that that they say is very good for that um, So I'm gonna try that do that quickly and then we will see where the road takes us next <laughs> enough to redo this whole trailer this is black and then like I said the doors since I'll be doing this whole trailer now in rubberizing the doors I'll be going for this well light gray but I think I'm gonna just mix a little bit of black in and see if I can get a little bit of a nicer color like a charcoalish color so anyways guys let's get this trailer out and then I'm gonna show you the jacks that I also got which is just phenomenal it works it's like exactly what i had in my mind 
And the weird thing is, people ask me, how do you think about this stuff? Well, it just comes to me. So let's get straight out and let me show you the jacks. So here's my jack mechanism. So it looks like a simple jack. It's actually fixed now at the moment. Basically, we have the jack and this part that goes down on it. That sounds wrong. And then these are the plates that are weld into the trailer. I've got two of them. And then this old plate gets welded on the jack. And this will just slide through and lock up. Let me show you. So I release just M6 bolt for now, which is going to be a safety pin. And then we decide we want to lower it. Okay, so now the jack is loose. I can turn it out, lower it, and then we can from here on just jack up. And that's basically it. Put the safety pin in obviously, but for now it's fine. So I'm just going to replicate what I've done here on the other side quickly before I get to painting this. And I also have to just close up this small little gap here, which is not an issue at all. guys so we're ready to paint now and this is more the viscosity that I was looking for on the paint so I've got a game plan I'm going to start on the inside and spray that inside spray the sides that side and then I'm gonna close this deck and move to the inside of the trailer and then work my way out if that makes any sense if not watch this time-lapse Okay, so while the compressor is running there in the back, this section is done now, the inside, that section. This went on a bit thicker than I thought it would, but um, I had some issues with viscosity again, blocking, and um, so I had to just dilute it a little bit with water, not a lot. But it's working 100% now. I'm maybe putting on too much pressure on the machine now, on the compressor. Um, I'm about spraying 5 bar, which is a bit high, but it, I just found it covers easier here and it's just a little bit better then. But anyways, it doesn't look too bad. So now I'm going to move on to the inside of that. I wanted to close this, but I was thinking that this is still wet and if I close it, it's just going to get stuck. So I'm going to move, maybe I must first do the, the roof and then move on to the inside because then I can stand on the inside and spray the roof. Okay guys, so I'm struggling a lot with um, blockages. So I've got some hot water here and I'm just going to try and clean it a bit.
Okay guys, so I've only got the inside left to do and I'm trying to think of a way to film this without ruining my camera full of this stuff um, but anyways, so years before and I'll just do a time lapse and hopefully you guys can see what's the end result I must say, so far, I love this effect this is just overspray and it's already like, it's rubbery it's very rubbery, so I love it I'm going to start that side, continue all the way here to those sides and still the inside of it. I've got no idea what my face looks like but I guess it's black just look at this it's amazing so I'm just gonna let this dry so in the meantime play the montage do the doors now on the trailer I take off the important parts and I've got this gray I'm not too keen on this light gray so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix both of them with the little black that I've got left and then spray whatever I have now the doors that's coming on the sides um, they'll spray separate on another day because I still need to make them and that should be it so let's get going on this. Um, the time that I've been waiting for for a very long time and that would be now to permanently mount that tent hanging there on the trailer but first I've got this Jeep in the way and yes I still have no word on injectors it's getting ridiculous um, if anybody out there knows where I can get like five injectors for a good price on this Jeep Please let me know because I'll definitely <laughs> consider it an option. Okay, so first let me get my wife to move the Jeep out and then we're going to put pull in the trailer and we're going to lower the tent and like I said 
I'll be using this 3M560 polyurethane adhesive sealant on the tent. But that's not all. I'm going to also bolt it through. That's why I've got the reinforcements on the trailer itself. So yes, this is just a very good sealant, but also a bond like they show there. It actually holds buses together, trucks, trains, caravans. Hey, goes enough. So let's get this Jeep out of the way, get the trailer in, and hopefully everything goes right. No way. Sheesh. I hope the trailer is lighter than the Jeep. Okay guys, not 100% sure how I'm going to do this because I've got these long bolts that I need to take out and then the tent will just fall on it and scratch it up. <sighs> I need to lift it somehow, keep it away from the trailer and then put the polyurethane in and then basically drop the front or the back first and then the rest. This looks like a mission on its own. <laughs> let's try. Let me let me see what I can do. Guys, the tent is on eventually, but I'm not going to open it on this episode. So you'll have to stick around till the next one. I'm going to wait for the polyurethane train to first just cure and then I can open up and I can drill the holes and we can fast in it. So guys, if you do like what you've seen and you stick it through all this way, please hit the subscribe button. And also give this video a thumbs up button. I know it's quite a long video. Thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. Keep safe. Cheers. So if you're still watching, this is the next project going up. <laughs>